Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dylan Jarris and I am an Etsy seller of six years. I've done $1.25 million on Etsy and I am also a wife and a mom of two boys. I have a strong e-commerce background. I worked for Zappos and Zulily. My whole education has been in business. Some people have asked why I've started doing this. I'm at the point in my Etsy business where I am pretty much coasting. I make three to four hundred thousand dollars a year on the platform and it's about thirty to forty thousand a month and I've done this consistently for several years now. I don't feel like I need to try to make more money from Etsy, but I do see that there's a lot of people out there who really, really, really want to make Etsy work and really would love to leave their full-time jobs to make Etsy their full-time thing. And it is so possible. There's so much money to be made on Etsy. So that is why I have started taking people under my wing and coaching them and teaching them the exact steps that I took to get to that $1.25 million on Etsy. So today I'm going to answer a question that I have been getting a lot and it is how do I get more visits and eyes on my shop? No matter how good your items are and how cute your shop looks, you're gonna get no sales if you have no visitors. At one point, I was driving half of my own traffic organically to Etsy, and I've consistently gotten as many as 50,000 views per month on my shop. Now, I know some of you out there are thinking, oh my gosh, I can hardly get like 500 views a month on my shop, what am I doing wrong? I'm gonna break down what I've done to get to that 50,000 views a month level. So number one, I wanna get this out of the way. You do not need Etsy ads, okay? You absolutely do not need Etsy ads. If you have time, then you can drive your own traffic organically. I found that at the peak, I spent $1,300 in one year on Etsy ads. Now that's about $109 a month. However, that same year, my revenue from that $109 ad spend per month was only $207. Now, if you're selling any physical type of product, this is terrible. It means I'm basically selling those items for half price. It was so not worth it. And still at the peak, those Etsy ads were only making up 2% of the visits to my shop. So an item that I sold for $100, right? My ad spend to get that revenue was $50. So let's say I sold an item on Etsy for $100. And let's say that my margin is 50%. The cost of the item, Etsy's fees and shipping, all of that totals around $50. So that leaves me a $50 profit to cover my hourly wage and the work that I put into it. Now with that return on my ad spend, that $50 profit would have gone to the ads. In this situation, if I had ads turned on, I would essentially be giving the item away for free and not even paying myself because the ad spend was half the revenue. So my strategy has never been to rely on Etsy ads for revenue or for visits. So you might be wondering, well, how do you get eyes on your stuff then? So I'm gonna show you the breakdown for my shop right now okay here we are looking at the visits to my shop in a full year 485,000 visits and at the peak we were at 53.3 thousand so now we're going to scroll down to the section that shows how shoppers found you so as you can see Etsy brought 71% of my visits and I brought 29% of my visits so as you can see the percentage is just the percent increase year over year, um, but the Etsy app brought 155,000 of those, I think 462, 485. So 155 was from the Etsy app, 49,000 was from Etsy search. So that's, so that's like the homepage. And Etsy marketing and SEO, that is a little bit misleading. It actually means search engines that Etsy is marketing through like Google, Bing, and Yahoo that is almost as many visitors as what came through the Etsy app. This is this is a really good number. And I brought 29% of the visits, so direct and other traffic, 20,000. Now this means from other websites. That does not mean from my social media because social media is a separate category and I drove 110,000 of those 485 through my social media. And then Etsy ads was 8,000. Um, and I told you earlier it was 2%. So now we're gonna take a deeper look at the social media, what that breakdown was. You just click the drop down. Of that 110,000, I drove 104,000 through Pinterest. Now I did not do any Pinterest ads. This is all organic. Facebook, 4,900. I did not do any Facebook ads. This was all from my um, personal and business Facebook page. And then Instagram was only 1,200. You guys, 
This, you do not need to pay for ads on anything. None of my social media traffic was, was reliant upon ads. So now you might be thinking, okay, so how do I do this Pinterest thing? Okay, so on Pinterest, you are going to want to get yourself a business Pinterest account. Um, it's pretty easy to set that up, but it allows you to see the analytics. It allows you to see what's actually working and what you should do more of. If you don't get a business Pinterest account, then you are simply going to be um, throwing a lot of spaghetti at the wall and wasting a lot of time. This is going to speed up your success in driving more traffic organically. On the analytics overview, on your business account, you can see um, any time frame you want. This is just the last 30 days. I've really kind of taken my foot off the gas with Pinterest because we we're just coasting. And with the momentum that I've built up, getting sales on Etsy right now is pretty effortless. So I haven't had to go hard in Pinterest. If I wanted to really put time into it, I could be driving way more traffic right now. But um, I'm just kind of coasting on the pins that I've created. The great thing about Pinterest is that your pins live forever and it's kind of like a snowball effect where if they get picked up, they build and build and build. And so unlike Instagram or Facebook where if you don't get uh, picked up in momentum and clicks and impressions in your first you know, 24 hours, it kind of disappears into the darkness, right? You never see it again. Pinterest, your pins live forever and they build and build and build on each other. So there's, um, I, I recommend investing your time here because you do get that snowball effect uh, from the effort you put in up front. So you can look at engagements, pin clicks. It'll show you exactly which pins are working, which what people are saving, um, outbound click rate, click rate where they're when they're clicking out to actually go to your Etsy page. It, it's really, really, really a lot of information that tells you what's working and what's not. So I'm going to show you how to create pins of your own stuff. Let's say this is your item. You're going to pin. You're literally going to pin wedding favors. There you go. And now if you click visit, it's on Pinterest and you're going to be able to see the stats because you have the business account. And if someone clicks on that, it will take them to your page. Now that is just the basic 101 of what to do with Pinterest. I go over this in depth to how to actually get people to repin your stuff on Pinterest in my course. Um, but this is just the 101 version so that you get an idea of what that means by driving traffic from Pinterest to your Etsy shop. So now maybe you're wondering, okay, so how do I get people who are actually going to Etsy to find my stuff? There's so many YouTube videos on this, but it's pretty basic. You need great, amazing SEO, great titles, great tags, great keywords, great descriptions, and you need amazing photos. The photo is what they're clicking on. When they're going through search results, they're probably not even reading the description. They're only seeing the first few words anyways. So it's really the photo that's what they are clicking on. If you make it in front of a customer, the photo is going to be the reason that they click on you. So maybe now you're thinking, well, how do I make it in front of the customer? That is where SEO comes in. That is where you need to be on point with your long tail keywords. You no need to know what keywords are trending, but most importantly, you need to know exactly who your customer is and what they are typing in to the search bar. You can look at things like Everbee and E-Rank and Marmalade all day, but what it really comes down to is basic common sense you need to have a good understanding of your customer and what they are typing in. You almost need to know how they think, how they speak, how they spell. Those things are the keys to actually having the chance to get in front of the customer to begin with. My SEO um, long tail keyword strategy is a little bit different than some of those that I've seen out there. Um, that would be a totally separate video, but your SEO and long tail keywords are going to be the reason that you even have the opportunity for a customer to see you. So now you might be thinking, well, how are you getting all this traffic from Etsy's marketing? The first reason is because my shop does well over that $10,000 threshold where I have no choice but to opt into offsite ads. So Etsy does choose whether or not they advertise my items on Google, Yahoo, Bing, etc. I've gotten to the point where I just build that directly into my pricing and I assume that everyone's coming to my Etsy shop through an offsite ad. Because remember, they take 12% um, if you were grandfathered into the program, and if you were not grandfathered in, then it's a 15% cut. So that's why I build it into my pricing. As you can see, I do get a lot of traffic, 29% from these offsite ads. 
So maybe you want to get picked up by these offsite ads. It is kind of nice that Etsy handles all of the advertising for you through Google. In order to get picked up on those search engines um, with the marketing that Etsy is doing offsite, you need to be something that is very highly searched, something that is trending in search. You need to have a product that people are searching for on Google. Not every item on Etsy is going to be highly searched on Google. And if you want to leverage Etsy's marketing through other search engines, learn what the keywords are that are driving them from offsite ads to your shop. Do more of that and include more of those terms in your product titles, listings, descriptions. So maybe you're wondering, how do you drive your own traffic? If you don't pay for ads, how do you drive your own traffic? You can drive traffic through Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Pinterest, but I recommend putting your focus into one of those. Um, so that your efforts are not diluted. And I think Pinterest is the perfect place to start. Now you might be asking why. I like Pinterest because I found that people on Pinterest are more used to clicking on a pin and going to another site. They're more likely to click on something that takes them to another site than people who are on Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok. People who are searching on Pinterest expect to click on a pin and be taken to another site they've decided already that they're willing to do that. A lot of people using Instagram and TikTok aren't necessarily looking to be taken to external websites. Instagram and TikTok work really hard to keep you on their, on their platform. The people using Instagram and TikTok are used to staying on the platform and swiping and kind of going down the rabbit hole. Whereas Pinterest users are more used to clicking on pins and going to external links. Just think about it. A lot of times on Instagram or Facebook, when you click on a link, they, Instagram or Facebook will ask you and double check, are you sure you want to be taken to another website? That alone is a little bit of a hurdle for that user to get through. Consider it like a gate. I don't know about you, but whenever you click on a link or a website and then something pops up and asks, are you sure you want to do this? It's kind of a red flag and you might think it's spam. There might be a lack of trust. It might put your guard up. So the person browsing TikTok, Instagram, Facebook is not the same type of person with the same intention of going to another website, which is what the people who are on Pinterest are expecting to do. So as you saw, I don't have a lot of traffic coming direct. It was only about 4% of my total traffic. Now I could really change this up if I wanted to, but I'm really comfortable with the amount of sales that I'm getting. So I haven't felt the need to tap into this more, but if I was going to tap into this more, what I would do is look into, so I actually did film the second half of this video, but I've decided to save it for my multi six figure Etsy blueprint students, just because it is that extra special tactical information just for them. If you are interested in being part of that program, um, I am still enrolling students. We've got a really great group of people. Everyone in there is bound and determined to grow a multi six figure. So if you are looking to be surrounded by like-minded people with the same aspirations um, and learn from someone who has done it themselves and who is doing it right now, uh, we'd love to have you join us. Um, if you're interested, schedule a call with me. We can talk more about your goals, what you're struggling with, and I can tell you a little bit more about the program. So um, please connect with me at Dylan Jarris over on Instagram. Subscribe here and we'll see you next time.